Hello knitters, Barbara Benson here. I'm an independent knitwear designer who also likes to make videos here on my YouTube channel, Watch Barbara Knit. If you'd like to know more about my knitwear designs, please check in the description below and there you will find a link to my Ravelry page where you can see all the patterns I have available that you could knit up if you decide to get a PDF. Also in the description below, you will find a link to the Watch Barbara Knits Facebook group, where if you'd like to continue the conversations that we are having here, you know, the subjects that I bring up and chat about them or share pictures, it's a closed group, so I'll approve you. Please come on over and we can chit chat and have some fun. Now, the description below is going to be chock full this video because this is my recap of Wisconsin Sheep and Wool for 2017. I want to thank you guys for your patience because I came back from Wisconsin Sheep and Wool to having no power because of Hurricane Irma. Now, being in Atlanta, it wasn't a huge deal. It was only a tropical storm by the time it got here, but it took out a lot of trees and a lot of power and made just a giant mess and one of the things is we got our power back fairly quickly but we did not get our internet back for several days so it made it very challenging um I couldn't upload any videos so I'm sorry I missed that but I'm sneaking in under the wire it's Friday and hopefully I'm gonna get this up this evening so you guys can at least see it this week and and again thank you for your patience hopefully next week will be a little bit bit will be a little bit back to normal. So I went to Wisconsin Sheep and Wool. And as you will see, I walked around and tried to find some fun booths for to video for you guys. Now I want to say that yes, there's yarn. Of course there's yarn, but I tried really hard this year to focus on non-yarn things because there's so many interesting things at a sheep and wool festival so hopefully you will find some of this interesting and if you've been on the fence about going to a fiber festival because you're like hey i don't need more yarn you might want to watch this to see all the other cool stuff that is there and it's just so much fun to be in all the fiber environment so make sure again to check in the description below because i will have links to all of the places that i managed to get the giant stack of business cards for Hi guys, I am here and it is the last day of Wisconsin Sheep and Wool and I'm going to do my best to get some video of some fun stuff for you guys. I know you've seen my booths before but I thought it'd be fun to let you guys look at the setup this year and always, as always, show you some of Gail's fabulous stuff. I'm going to back up and hit the turnaround button. So here is my spiral of goodies. I have obviously a mixture of uh, independent patterns and stuff from my book. Uh, Earthbound Misfit has been going over fabulously here at the event. And also Ready Player One's been going well. I have this little display and this, I gotta show you this is my copy that I have out in case people want to look at it because I've completely sold out of the books I brought which is hysterical you know I got a lot to learn there's fractured helix shiny happy is a fingering weight wool silk and I want to show you guys so there's the information look at this I'm gonna get it in the Sun this is called brass octopus and it just looks like molten, like precious metals with the silk. It's just a beautiful, beautiful yarn. I'm really coveting it. And then these, again, it's something unusual. You don't see it every Indie Dyer. It's called Bits and Bobs. And it's got these little noopy guys in it. And it's so, uh-oh. I hope Gail doesn't see that. <laughs> And it's got all these fun colors. Look at this. This is, she's getting the hop on the holiday. This is peppermint. It's really cool. And this is it knit up. This pattern is uh, Mindy Wilkes Holden. 
and it just knits up beautifully. Look at that. Love the noops. They're all my patterns. And then she has Wonder Sock. And the MYS. The MYS is the Merino Yak Silk that I knit Love Child in. Looky there. Woohoo, Love Child. And it is one of her new colors I'm really digging. It's pecan. And it's a really, really super nice pecan brown color love it and it's right here next to this gold it's just so pretty this is such a lustrous yarn the yak and the silk it's just gorgeous she knitted up in Hitofude and it makes great and then as always her fabulous sock blanks she's got a couple really fun ones that um, look at this one and it's got a raven on it which I think is really cool. I think it might be Game of Thrones. I know she had one that said something about like a dragon not being, I, I don't watch Game of Thrones, I don't know, but it's cool. And then this one is a cool steampunky one. And I wanna show you about sock blanks. If you've not seen sock blanks, you actually unravel them and knit, right? And so this is what this sock blank looked like. And then the sock, this is how it knit up. If you look at the back, that's where all the white came from. Isn't that cool? I thought it was, it's just fascinating. So you know that there was like a secret message and stuff, but once it's knit up, it's this just cool speckle pattern. And she has fiber for the fiber people. And I actually spun a tiny bit. We're still working on that. And I love that she has weaving samples. So here is the woven. This is graffiti and asphalt in shiny happy. And I think this one is blue, black, and white or blue, black, and gray. But look at the drape on that. How pretty. And then finally, Gail has started doing gradients we're down a little bit because she has sold them like hotcakes but look at this one it's got from brown through greens then to this really bright kind of teal color it's fabulous I'll hang that up in a minute and one I like so this has all these autumny colors and I've sold this one to some people to do earthbound misfit in with this is the contrast color so it's got that pop. Isn't that cool? I think it'll look amazing. And then here's this one. Let me get the shine off of it. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? And then this one we've sold out in the other base. But look at that. Gorgeous. I am at Spry Whimsy Fiber Arts and there's one of the owners. And we're gonna see the beautiful, look at this felt art. It is so very cool and organic and the colors are amazing. They have super cool bags and just art scarves. It's just amazing, look at this. Oh gosh, look how gorgeous that is. It's got some, I don't know, it's probably silk and with all these different fibers and this bag, look how cool this bag is. It's got this little peekaboo effect and hats. It's just fiber artists never cease to amaze me. Look at the color. These are like art scarves that you can, oh, it's way softer than I thought it would be. Wow. And they've got little flowers. They also sell spinning wheels. More hats, hey! There's me. There's another bag. Look at that. Isn't that cool? The texture that they're getting and the color is amazing. And of course, they also sell yarn. Isn't it beautiful? Oh, that's a great little coat. How cute. Little baby sweater. There's some great yarns ingredient sets right. look at this this is so cool this is a felt back on this jeans jacket a way to wear your fiber art 
and some more gorgeous bags. I'm having to turn on and turn back off because I don't want to get other event, other people participating. Yarn to squish, yarn to squish. Look, we're still in Spry Whimsy. This is from Fiber Co Tundra. That, I love that green. I'm really feeling bulky yarn right now. See, look at these cool gradients. They're so cute. And then we get into fiber, but I'm gonna stop here because I don't want to grab anyone without permission. Turkish spindles. Snyder's. I think I, I think Snyder is actually here, and I'm gonna go see if I can find him. Look, it's got a tiny pig on it. What is better than tiny pigs? And dragonflies. Oh, it's got all kinds of cool stuff. And there's some multicolor ones back there. And I think these are something to do with spinning. I'm not real sure what they do. You bobbins. bobbins. They look giant bobbins. There we go. And look, this is cool. This, I believe, is for figuring out the weight of your yarn in some way, shape, or fashion. I think it's a WPI tool is what it's called. And you wrap the wraps for inch. You wrap the yarn around it and it tells you the weight of your yarn after you've spun it. Oh, how cool is that spindle? Oh. Fiber. So, here are more. Look, it's a T-Rex. That is fabulous. So these are, I found out, Snyder spindles. And guess what? We have the actual Snyder here. And he is actually going to show us um, how to spin with a Turkish spindle for you guys. All right, with the Turkish spindle, you have to start out with a leader to get you to the top of the spindle. So I'm just gonna spin a leader. I'm just gonna lay a little tuft over and stab it in. Oh, cool. And I'm just gonna draw back and just make a leader just to get me to the top. So when we get to the top, we're gonna put a half hitch in. A half hitch, let me get hitch. up over. It's a lot like doing a cast on and knitting, cool. like the first step. Like, almost so, like, okay. So I'm just going over my finger, going back and pulling. And that's enough to hold on to the spindle. Okay. Now we're going to spin and we're going to draft. Okay, let me get around so we can see what you're doing. Look, it's spinning. So he's just, so drafting is pulling the fibers apart. Correct. Like lengthening them. Yep. Now it looks like I'm holding on to it really hard, but I'm not. I'm supporting it like I'm holding a baby bird. Okay. So I'm just just gently holding it with my pinky. Mm -hmm. Now this fiber here, the staple length is about three inches. Okay. So I need to have at least three inches between where I'm pulling and the end here. Oh, that's interesting. If you're grabbing on both sides of the fiber, you're not going to be able to pull it. Okay. You have to grab it where you're going to let it. So you have to grab through. it the fiber length away. Yes. So I'm okay. Supporting here. So now I'm just going to bring it up. I'm Ooh. going to wrap it onto the spindle. Okay, and that's what's fancy about Turkish. Oh, you're going to put on the... So to get the half inch off, I'm just going to pull on the bottom. I'm going to take my finger and just okay. pop it off. Now I'm going to wind over two arms and under one, over two, under one. And I'm just going to keep repeating that pattern over and over and over again. If you've seen pictures of Turkish spindles where they have a god eye pattern on the top mm -hmm. with variegated, yeah. what they're doing is they're laying it right next to the previous one. Very, okay, very carefully. Very carefully. I'm just making yarn, so I'm just putting it haphazardly on there. Okay, so over two, under one. Over, over two, two, under, under one. one. I'm leaving myself enough room to get to the top of the spindle. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to barber pull up. Okay. So I'm just taking the spindle and wrapping it around the shaft. Uh huh. You don't have to do this, but once you start getting a cop, if you just go straight up, you're uh -huh. going to have a thread sitting there that's just going to want to oh, catch on everything. And that, that'll be a pain in the butt. That would not be a okay. good thing. So now I'm just going to just spin and draft. So cool! So drafting takes some practice. Mm -hmm. If you do it for 15 minutes a day, in a week or two, you'll build up enough muscle memory in your hands where it'll just kind of automatically... Come out, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like anything, you got to practice. That's what I've been telling my son. And then I'm back to wrapping over two, two under, under one. Yep. How cool. I have a friend of mine that calls the ball that you make with this a turtle. Yes. That's she because. said it looks like a turtle. It does. It definitely looks like a turtle shell. Oh, how fun. Now, the coolest part about Turkish spindles, mm -hmm. I'm just going to wind this one on real quick. Okay. And then I'll show you the next one, how to take the turtle off. Oh, we're going to de-turtle-fy it. Yes. So what you've actually wound is a center pull ball. Okay. Oh, wow. So to get it off, mm -hmm. I'm just going to take this and just wrap it around. Okay. Now I'm going to take the shaft out. 
Oh. And I started with that little tuft. That's yeah. Right here. So that you that's shoved the, in. Okay. That's the beginning of the center pull. I'm gonna pull one arm out. And pull, pull the, the other arm. arm out. And poof. And poof. It's like magic. Now you have a center pull ball all ready for plying. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> now you can also go from the top and the bottom together and do a sort of Andean ply. Oh my goodness, you're getting complicated. <laughs> or if you just wanted to go from the center, you could take a Pyrex uh, measuring cup, mm -hmm. set it upside down over the top, run this through the spout, and then uh -huh. you could ply directly off the, off the ball. Off the ball. Wow. And if you use Pyrex, you can see what's going on. On the inside. That's so a good tip. if something tip. happened and you got a, a snag in there and it starts to mess up, mm -hmm. you're able to see it. So it just pulls right out of the center. Yep. Now, in theory, could you just knit directly from that? You could. You, but most people, your voice is saying, but you wouldn't be happy. But I wouldn't be happy. <laughs> This is the first step. You definitely want to ply your yarn. Okay. And I really like to wet set my yarn mm -hmm. after it's plied. Okay. So you could ply it and then knit directly off this, uh -huh. but I wouldn't do it on anything that you'd want to block. Okay. If you're just making a, a beanie or a hat for somebody that you're mm -hmm. not concerned about it, you could, but I still okay. prefer wet setting. Okay. Thank you so much not for showing problem. us. <laughs> I am at the Jenny the Potter booth. And you should come to Wisconsin Sheep and Wool because you can actually walk around in her booth. It's awesome. And I want to show you the absolute beautiful stuff she makes. What in the world are in these tiny, tiny little, oh my goodness, stitch markers, tiny bikes, tiny stars. Was there, oh, knit, that's super cool. That, that one doesn't like me. But so we've got all these cool stitch markers. Ooh, feminine. Interesting. And there's some little sheepies. And we've got beautiful tumblers. And then I'm gonna back down and show you, I, you know what, I'm just gonna let you guys look at it because there's so many different things. Oh my gosh. Is that like a bear wearing a scarf? <laughs> That's fabulous. Let's see what's going on here. Oh, it's another bear wearing a scarf, but he's wearing a completely different scarf. That's a chicken. And we've got little essentials trays to put things in. Oh, wow, look how beautiful the inside of this is. Oh, it's gorgeous. So it, it's just, if you like pottery, Jenny the Potter. Oh, this is funny. I think this is a ceramic artist joke. I throw like a girl. <laughs> oh, it's a rocket ship. It's a rocket ship with a tiny crab in it because the crabs are colonizing the universe, apparently. That is adorable. And, oh, that's pretty. <laughs> Yes, I'm just going to pretty much be going, this is beautiful, this is awesome, because everything here is absolutely beautiful. So, Jenny the Potter, I will put a link in the description so you can check out more of her stuff. Throw like a girl. Basket artistry, all hand woven, and I wanted to show you guys all these amazing baskets every different size every different shape look at this one it's got the sections isn't that cool i can totally see sitting that on the floor and being able to knit from it look at this one isn't that cool you can keep so much stuff in there this one has for your spindle it's got straps you can walk along and spin this says it's a roving tote so you put stuff in there and they also have all of these cute sheep absolutely everywhere look it's a bear in sheep's clothing look how cute beautiful beautiful baskets i just wanted to show you because you know me in mid knitting bags but you know what? Knitting baskets might have to become a thing. Look at that guy. Say hello! They're beautiful. Look at this one. 
Look at the bottom of that. I think that's more decorative than anything, but it is absolutely beautiful. And these, I believe you can strap on your back so you can carry everything. So check in the description below and I will have a link to this wonderful resource. I wanted to show you guys these absolutely enormous pin looms. Look at this. It is gigantic. I mean, here's my hand. It's, it's like huge. And then here's a giant triangle one that he's in the process of warping up. And he said, so you bring your thread here and you're gonna bring it across here and hook it around here and then go up and then you're just doing it's really really cool i can totally see making absolutely beautiful pieces with these looms here are the pieces that are made on that triangle loom aren't they absolutely beautiful and that one's got a gorgeous pattern on it and then we've got this one in the front. Look at that. They are just absolutely stunning. I am in the pumpkin house and look at these amazing dolls. The emotion, I was told, I was concerned when I walked by that the pear and the apple were sad, but I was told that they're just contemplative. So they're thinking very deep fruity thoughts but they're just, and her, look at her face. How she got so much emotion with just the eyes. It's just, they're beautiful, beautiful pieces. And a fox. And then the dolls sucked me in, but then there were bags. And you know how it goes. Look at the fox. And they're beautifully made. They're in nice stitching. They have fun inside fabrics. I like the bicycles. This is one that's standing up. It's got the little loopy guy here. I'm sure that's the technical term for him. And she also has the zipper box bags and another beautiful doll. So I wanted to show you guys the pumpkin house. So I was so distracted by the sad, not sad pair that I didn't notice all of this beautiful jewelry. This is Bricolage Studio. I don't know if I pronounced that right, but look how cool these shawl pins are. She does like little fiber bits. They're so pretty. And you've got, is this brass or copper? Copper, so it's gonna age really cool. And she has fiber. Do you spin this yourself? Oh, so it's all hand spun. And then a little, I guess, DIY hand spun. What are these? Oh my goodness. No, they're not. I would take it home and put a couple googly eyes on it and call it George. And I would love it and pet it. Look at these. Oh, that is a neat way to announce your love. Does this spin? Yes. A little bit. No, it doesn't. I almost knocked it over. <laughs> Look at these cool earrings for your yarn. Oh, wow. Cool. It's got like a little clear vessel and little bits of fiber inside. That is super cool. And the beads, these are neat. It's very creative. I've never seen this kind of yarn-based jewelry. And then there's some more just beautiful copper pieces. There's felt? Let's get close. Oh, there totally is felt. So there's your fiber element. And then these are more fibery back here. They're similar to the stitch the stitch, blah, 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 shawl pins out front. And there are some more, these are, and so these are gonna probably have the felt in them. They sure are. Oh, I like this little detail with these little, they almost look like flowers. I call those my poppies. Poppies, oh, so they are flowers. I was like, either that or stick men with, um, without arms and legs. <laughs> but these are absolutely beautiful. So I will put a link to Bricolage Studios down below. Sun Valley Fibers, from our farm to your hands. And the colors here are fairly monumental. Just pretty much, I mean, just look at these grays. 
Aren't they beautiful? And then all the greens and all the blues and all the purples. I mean, I mean, it's just all, and they're all beautiful. Look how good this, this is worsted weight. Let's see. Look, oh, and it feels so nice. This, ah, uh, merino cashmere nylon. Oh, that feels good. Worsted weight, more beautiful, beautiful grays. This one is 100% merino, not quite as soft, but one would expect that with the lack of cashmere. But she's got multiple different blends and also a plethora of absolutely beautiful samples. And look, there is a whole um, another half of the booth. Look, oh, look at that. It's like a peachy, oh, that's gorgeous. Let's see here. This is merino cashmere silk and fingering. Oh, that, oh, I'm crooked. Sorry guys, hope you aren't nauseous. But look at all these pretty colors. I'm trying to do it slow so nobody gets nauseous. And this one is fingering. This is the merino cashmere silk. And then I'm gonna back up all the colors. And then she's got these tiny little skeins. Look at those. Ah, I wanna do peephole with these. Just strand and strand and strand. Every color you could possibly imagine. I'm gonna close in. Ooh, ooh, look at this one. So this is Merino Cashmere Nylon, fingering weight. 50 yard mini skeins. So just 50 yards, do color work, do all kinds of amazing, oh, look at that. Amazing, amazing stuff. I hope you enjoyed Wisconsin Sheep and Wool as much as I did. I have to show you something. I couldn't resist. I got the tiny crab that is flying his little spaceship and look up here there's a yarn ball in a comet and it's just so cute this is from jenny the potter and i think this was a leftover she does special things for maryland sheep and wool and then for rhinebeck and this one's a crab so it's probably maryland so i hope you enjoyed that video if you did please give it the thumbs up click that like button and if you would like to be notified whenever I upload a new video, which I promise more will be coming next week, please subscribe to my channel and select notifications. Thank you so much.